fabric here folded in half. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. And I have the greatest stretch where it stretches the most going this way and it stretches the least going this way. And I have it folded. All we have to do is place our pattern on the fold. So this straight line goes on the fold and you trace around it and you cut it out. And um, I would trace around this using a water soluble marker, but my water soluble fabric marker is actually this color so you guys wouldn't be able to see it on the screen. So I'm going to go around it with a washable Crayola marker. I suggest you not do this. Either use a chalk or a water or air soluble pen. Just trace around the pattern. You could pin the pattern but um, With this pattern being made out of computer paper or printer paper, I'm just going to trace around it. Now, if you used actual pattern paper or Swedish tracing, tracing paper, you could probably go ahead and pin it. If you used actual pattern tissue or gift wrap paper or Swedish tracing paper which is actually the best thing to do for this is to use the sweeting tracing paper but I ran out so that is our front and basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out and then we're going to do the same thing is we're going to uh, trace around the back and we're gonna cut it out so I'm going to cut this out and then I'll meet you guys at the sewing machine and um, we'll sew it up. I'll be right back. One more thing before we get started, the swim the swim suit tank any needs to be lined in the front. So the way we're going to do the lining is you take the front pattern and you trace around it and the lining is always a um, half an inch smaller on the inside then the outside and that's what's supposed to make your support so after you do that all you do is bring your pattern over a quarter of an inch and then you trace it again and then you cut out on that quarter of an inch line and the shorter one is going to be your liner and the one that is the proper size is going to be your front and your back does not have to be lined because your back does not need support. Your front does. So I'm going to cut this out. We are going to, uh, for the strap, all I'm going to do is take a four inch strip of fabric, which will be four inches wide, and the length of the strap. And we're going to do the next strap, which is, um, what did I write down? 19 inches. We're going to make a 19 inch long neck strap, and that's what we're going to do for that. And um, that'll be, be it. When I cut this out, we'll be back. I'll cut the next strap out, and we will sew it together. I'll be right back. Okay, the first thing we're going to sew is the neck strap. This is, um, I'm going to make it two inches wide. So I cut it, um, well actually I'm going to make it one and a half inches wide. I cut it two inches wide. And all I'm going to do is fold it in half. And I'm going to sew a seam down the uh, length. And then I'm going to turn it to the right side. I will meet you at the sewing machine. One okay, moment. now when you sew with a... Um, knit fabric. What you need to do is change your needle out to a ball point needle. And I need to actually thread my machine because it's not threaded. What you need to do is change to a ball point needle. And the reason why you're doing that is because um, you don't want the needle to um, snag your fabric. So you want to change to a ballpoint needle. That's the first thing you want to do. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to sew with a uh, zigzag stitch if you do not have a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. And most people think you're supposed to 
use the biggest zigzag stitch when you do this, when you're using knit fabrics, but actually it's the opposite. You want to use the smallest zigzag stitch that you have because the smaller stitch actually stretches more. And you want it to, the um, stitches to stretch with your um, fabric. So go to the smallest zigzag stitch. If you have a stretch stitch on your machine, use that. The stretch stitch on your machine will look like a lightning bolt. And that's the one you want to use. And I'm using a half inch seam allowance. And for me, because my needle lines up over here instead of in the middle, a half inch would be actually the width of the presser foot because my presser foot is actually a little bit wider than its average and the needle goes over to the left and not in the center. So I have it set for the zigzag stitch and all I'm going to do is lower my needle and so I'm going to put it on a medium put it on a medium stitch uh, speed and I'm going to sew now another word of advice when you're sewing this some people think you have to stretch the fabric you really don't have to stretch the fabric but you can if you want to, to be on the safe side however if you do that your fabric may buckle up if your fabric is buckling up and you're not stretching the fabric, that means your tension is too high. Adjust the tension a little bit lower and you should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. Go a little bit to the front. Go backwards a little bit. And then draw a straight line down. And honestly, you. one more thing. When you're sewing this, and it's kind of hard for me to do it because I'm actually sitting on the side of the sewing machine, you don't have to use pins. What you want to do is line up your edges and then you're going to take the fabric between your two fingers like this. See, this is my hand. I'm going to take the fabric between these two fingers, take it like this, hold it up like this, take this other finger, hold it down, and this is the one you're going to guide it with. And then you're going to let the presser foot do what it's supposed to do. Don't try to push it through there. Just hold this up, hold this down, and guide it through. And just make sure the edge stays lined up with your guidelines. And it will sew just fine. Okay, I'm gonna come back on camera. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it come back on camera when it's completed and then I'll show you how to um, how to turn it to the right side I'll be back okay I'm back and I have um, the strap sewed together and let me zoom in so you guys can see what this stretch stitch looks like this is what the stretch stitch looks like now if you don't have a stretch stitch, this is how small your zigzag needs to be. So when you move, it actually stretches with you quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom out some so you can tell how much I'm stretching this fabric. Okay. If you have the smaller zigzag stitch, see how far apart my fingers are and look how far I stretch it one more time see how far apart my fingers are look how much I stretch that that's a lot let me zoom out again okay you see this and then I'm stretched see how much I stretch that and these seams do not break that's because I'm using the small zigzag stitch. Now, if I had to use the large zigzag stitch, it wouldn't have stretched this much. My seams would have popped. So you use the smaller zigzag stitch when you do this. And when you get ready to turn it, what you need to do is take a safety pin, put it in the seam allowance, and, um, you want to put it in the seam allowance because just in case you get a snag, you can stop the snag. And then you take that safety pin, put it in the tube, 
and this guide itself and guide it through to the other side just like this Just gonna scrunch it up until the pin comes out the other side and I'm going to pull it through and this is the way you would turn it if you were using a knit or a woven see how my uh oh see how my safety pin is right here I'm going to just pull it through and now I have it to the right side. And now all I'm going to do is take um, that same stretch stitch and I'm going to top stitch down the side. So I'm going to do that. And then when we come back, this will be done. And then we'll be ready to put the liner and the strap in the front together and then we'll sew it to the back and we'll almost be done. This is a very quick project. You could probably do it, an advanced beginner could do this in 30 minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and um, ready to put the front of the um, swimsuit together. This is the front, this is the strap. It's all done and top stitched and everything. You don't have to do a top stitch, I just did it. Um, you can see that and like I was saying you use a smaller zigzag stitch and look how much that stretches I'm not in any danger of these seams popping anytime soon so you use a smaller zigzag stitch and I'm going to line up the uh, neck strap with the liner I'm going to put one right here and then bring the other end around make sure it's not twisted when you do this and I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to pin it temporarily right now until I get the liner done. And you want to pin it, if you do not have ballpoint pins, you're going to want to pin it in the seam allowance so you don't accidentally snag the uh, fabric. So I'm pinning it in the seam allowance. I made sure that this was not twisted or anything. And when we're done, after we sew it, it's going to come like that and then this is goes around her neck but for right now it's like this and now remember the liner is a quarter of an inch smaller than than the um, front of the fabric so I'm going to start down here on the edge and I'm going to pin it line it up and pin this side because the sides actually match they're just one side is they're just um, shorter than the other side that actually is half an inch shorter because you need to have the lining give you support for your bosoms so for your bust area and for your stomach this is what the uh, actually controls the uh, It's kind of like putting a sports bra inside of your swimsuit. You know how the sports bra is really tight and that's what keeps you all, keeps you together when you're running and exercising and things like that? Well, that's what we're doing. We're basically putting a sports bra into our swimsuit. Now, I pinned this side. And now I'm going to come over here and pin the other side. The exact, basically the same way. I'm not pinning the top and I'm not pinning the bottom. You got to leave the bottom open because you need a place to turn your fabric over to the front side. So I'm going to leave that bottom open and I'm going to pin the sides here and then I'm going to pin the top because I have to stretch the top to uh, match so it's easier I have to stretch the lining to match the top so it's easier for me to do it like this to pin the sides first so that's what I'm doing 
and then after I pin all the sides, and you want to use pins on this side. If you don't normally use pins, you want to use pins on this project for the simple fact that you do have to make the lining smaller, at least a half an inch smaller than um, the front. So you want to use pins on this. And now that I have the sides pinned up, I can stretch the top to make sure that the top is pinned so I can go ahead and sew and sandwich the next strap in between the two layers and then I'll sew the front to the back and then I'll hem it and I'll be done. So now here we are right here. This is where I have to stretch it. I'm going to start in the middle here and then I'm going to stretch it outward to make sure that the side seams meet. So I have that and now I have to stretch it out to make sure it meets. And if you have a friend or somebody to help you with this on this part where you have to stretch it out, you don't have to stretch it that much. It's helpful to have someone else to pin it for you while you stretch or you um, let them stretch it and you pin however way you want to do it. Or you can do like I am and struggle with it. Okay, I'm back and I sewed the front to the lining. Now all I have to do is put my hands in the bottom because I left the bottom open and turn it to the front. And I'm going to put my hand in here and get all the seams out to the right side. There we have it. There's the next strap. This is the front and the other side is the lining. The lining is smaller than the front so it's going to pull a little bit. Now what I have to do is attach the back to the front, but before I do that I want to hem it so I can finish it. And I'm only hemming the top part and all I'm going to do is fold it over a quarter of an inch and fold it over another quarter of an inch. Let me zoom in so you can see I'm what I'm doing. I'm fold it in a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and I'm just going to do a a um, stretch stitch across there. Now if you have a twin needle you could do the twin needle, you can use your twin needle to sew across this but what you want to do is you want to sew with it on this side which is the right side. So the stitches would be on this side and the twin needle part would be on the wrong side. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a stretch stitch all the way across. And then when I finish that, we'll come back and we will pin the back to the front and sew it together. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I top stitched the top of the back. This is the back side. This is the front side, and I used um, the small zigzag or the stretch stitch. And once again, you see how much that stretches. Nowhere in danger of that seam popping anytime soon because of the small zigzag stitch that I use. Now we're ready to put this to the front, and we will be almost done. Now this is the front. Now what we want to do is make sure the smaller side is facing the table and the bigger side is facing me. And the reason why is because this is the inside, I mean the outside, and the smaller side is the inside. And we want to put right sides together so the bigger side would be the right side. And I'm going to turn it this way actually. And we are just going to put the right sides together the insides out and pin along the side. Got to make sure I get this seam just right and I'm going to 
pan the back to the same here. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure I pull the seam out to where the stitching let me zoom in. So remember you can see what I'm earlier about. we sewed the liner to the to the um, shell. So there's a seam right here on the side. Right there. You don't want that seam to be in like this. You want to bring the stitching out like this and then you pin them together. I hope you can see what I'm talking about on camera. And you want to do this all the way to the end and then you do the other side. So just going to pin it around. I'm only going to pin one side on the camera because you're basically pinning it the exact same way you did when you were pinning the lining to the front because you know the lining was was um, smaller than the front so you pin one side and then you go pin the other side now because we we um, hem the top of the uh, swimsuit with the tankini before we're pinning it, we won't have to come back and finish that top part. All we have to do is finish the bottom when we're done. So we're almost done. So, And after I do this, we'll see if we can get Maris to take a picture in the top. She's kind of shy, so I don't know if we're going to get her to do that or not, but I'm going to ask her. And then basically, it's taking me a long time because I'm trying to make sure that the seams are not folded in. We want them to be out. Now, if we had not put the neck strap on, I would have sewed all of this together at once and we will be done, but we did not do that. We put the next strap on. And I'm done this side. And I'm going to pin the other side. And um, I'm gonna take it to the machine. Take it to the machine and sew all of this. And then all we'll have left to do is to finish the bottom and we'll be done. So let me go ahead and um, pin the other side and sew this part up. I'm not going to put that part on the camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm sewing the back to the back of the uh, tankini to the front and I'm almost done with this side piece and I'm going to show you how we're going to top stitch it. So you can sew the back on and top stitch all at one time because it the front does need to be top stitch. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and finish this, come all the way off the back and continue on till you get to the other side and then you're going to sew down the other side. And it goes like this. You just, I'm just going to sew it. When I get to the end, I'm going to continue all the way off the end and just go all the way around. just go all the way around. I'm gonna turn the machine off and adjust it because this is the part where the um, seam, not the seam, the lining is smaller than the the um, front. So I'm going to have to stretch it out a little bit to make it match. So I'm gonna stretch it out and just guide it around. And I'm gonna do this until I get all the way to the end. And when I get to the end and I'm getting ready to sew the other side, I'm just gonna go straight down the other side of the uh, top. So now I have this top stitch. 
I have the top stitch and I sewed the back on all at the same time when I'm done and all that is left to do is to hem the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I have sewed um, the back to the front and now all I have to do is turn it to the right side out and now I have to hem the bottom. Now if you do not have a twin needle you can go ahead and fold it under. You're going to take um, fold it under and just do the stretch stitch or the zigzag stitch all the way across. However, if you have a twin needle, you can do what looks like a cover stitch on the serger, but it's not the cover stitch exactly. That's the way I'm going to hem it my, right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this in once. I'm not really going to turn it in twice. I'm going to turn it in once, about a half an inch. And I'm going to pin it all the way around making sure to stretch it a little bit when I'm in the front to make the front and the um, liner match up because right now as you remember the liner is smaller so I'm going to stretch it a little bit to make the liner match up I'm going to paint it, turn it in half an inch on the front all the way around and then I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like to actually sew this with the twin needle and um, we'll be finished and you'll see Maris with it on if she agrees to get on the camera with it. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to use my twin needle for um, the hem this. I already have it, I already have the twin needle in the machine and threaded. And if you would like to see a tutorial on how to do that for the Brother machine, that I have here, I will make that in a future day. But um, I would suggest right now to look at your manual and read the manual to figure out how to do it for your particular machine. With that being said, now I'm going to do use the the um, going to use the twin needle, but I'm going to use it on a regular straight stitch. And that straight stitch is going to make what looks like a cover stitch on the fabric. So now I have it folded in right here. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. And for the purposes of using the twin needle, you have to sew this on the right side. So what you need to do is fold this over as much as possible to make sure that you're going to catch both sides and um, you don't have to fold it over twice you can fold it over one time and trim it because this is what I'm going to do so you just put it in there line up this folded edge with your presser foot lower the presser foot do not zigzag stitch with your um, twin needle in here because if you do that you could break something because it's not going to go in properly because it's twice the size of one needle so you need to do a straight stitch when you do this and I'm just going to lower the needle and I'm going to just start sewing and I'm using two different color threads here so you guys can see when I'm finished what it looks like but when you do this at home you're going to use a thread that matches your fabric and use both of the threads the same color unless you just want to have the contrasting look. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it and you just sew like you would normally sew. You don't have to change the tension or anything like that. Your normal tension should be fine. And on your stitch, you might wanna do a I'm doing a two and a half. My stitches are two and a half in length. And really honestly, I probably should have did um I probably should have did three or three and a half just for aesthetic purposes. It doesn't have to be that, but sometimes I think it looks better. And 
Also, I did not do it on this because I don't have any. I would, instead of using a regular thread in the bobbin, I would use a woolly thread. And when I do get some of that, I have it on order. When I get the woolly thread, I'll do a tutorial to show you how to do that. But for right now, for this video, we're just going to use a regular thread. Let me go ahead and do it. You just guide it through there just like you would if you were sewing with one needle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And then when I come back, I'll let you see what the hem looks like on the other side. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I finished hemming the um, swimsuit top with the twin needle. This is what it looks like on the front. I hope you can see both threads. There is a um, pink thread there. And then there's also an auburn thread there. Red, dark auburn thread there. This is what it looks like on the top. And this is what it looks like on the bottom. It just looks like some railroad tracks or something right there. And this part right here that I folded over to make sure that I got it cased into the, um, to the seam because I couldn't really see it, I'm just going to trim that off. Now the swimsuit is actually, the swimsuit top is done. So when I see you guys next, you will see Maris wearing it. She agreed to wear it, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and here is the tankini top. Maris does not want to be on camera, so I'm not going to put her on camera. There's the tankini top from the front. Can you turn around to the back, Maris? And there it is in the back. Fits perfectly. Turn around to the front again. Alrighty, there you have it. That's the tankini top. And um, maybe next week I might do another video on how to make a bikini top from your measurements. A bandeau bikini top from your measurements. I haven't decided yet, but I might. And as usual, say it with me, Maris. Happy sewing. Bye.